Okay, uh, welcome everybody back to, everyone back to the user group today. Uh, so I wanted to go over a couple of new things that are coming out uh, and some new things that have already come out. Uh, so one of the things I first wanted to talk about was, uh, you have to remember that, I know we, we talk a lot about the marketplace here, but we are the, the web user group and we go over pretty much anything that is a web page for Second Life. Um, and one of the things if, uh, some people in here might have been a keen person and followed our blog all the time and noticed that we are making an update to the Linden Home Store. So the current Linden Home Store um, has is a little on the older side and has a couple of downsides to it. Uh, and we are releasing a completely revamped Linden Home Store. Uh, where you will be able to view all the different types of Linden Homes, whether you are logged in, uh, what kind of a subscription you have, uh, and you can see layouts and colors and different pictures, uh, and you can also even see it on mobile. Uh, so it, it should be a, a vastly improved experience. Um, it is not 100% out yet, but it is done, uh, and we will be releasing it very soon, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, and I'm down to take any questions for that, if anybody has any questions on the new Linden Homes release. For the marketplace specifically, uh, we have released a couple of changes. So one of the first things to talk about is we changed uh, reviews where it, it's not that the math behind reviews did not change. What we changed was if you were to go to a product page and look at uh, your review average, if you had something like a 4.7 average or a 4.8 average, we would show on the graphic that it's four and a half stars, like 4.5 stars. Um, now, if you drilled down and you looked at the, you know, looked under the covers, you would see that it's, oh, it's 4.7 or it's 4.8. Um, but most people lots of times will just simply look at the product page and look at the picture of the icon and see four and a half stars. So if you had any items that had a review average uh, that was like 4.8 or 4.7 or 4.6. We were showing 4.5. We've now corrected that to round up to show five stars. So some of your um, items may you may have noticed now shows five stars instead of four and a half, and and, and that's why. So we're we're looking into like how this performs and how people um, you know is, react to that change, and then we may make further changes to reviews. So we're, we're hoping that this is a better reflection of um, how people are actually reviewing items uh, that we felt like we probably should be rounding up to five if you had a 4.8 um, instead of rounding down. So hopefully this is a, a better improvement. Some other stuff that we've done, uh, we have made some bug fixes. Uh, some of them I can't reveal for security reasons, but we did plug some holes. Uh, we also made some changes to internal reports. So if you uh, look at your uh, your uh, your orders page, you will. A lot of people were getting confused that when they would look at uh, their sort. So if you go to your store and sort by best selling, it would list those items by how well they've sold over the last uh, thirty days, and the report that you would review inside your uh, admin tool or your uh, your merchant tools would show your best selling like all time. So pe some people were getting confused like, oh, well, uh, like it's not matching up. Um, that, that's because we, we were calculating it differently in two different places. So in one place, it was by the last 30 days and the other place it was over all time. So we've made a change to that report where there is now a column that shows uh, units sold in the last 30 days. Uh, so you can still view all time, uh, but you can now view 30 days as well on that report. So that's your, that's your top selling report. I think it's what it's specifically called. Another thing that we've been working on is you may remember uh, we removed some items from the marketplace that uh, had that were from merchants that had not logged in in a really long time. Um, one of the things that we did not finish on that was demo items were still appearing 
uh, to that were linked to items that got removed, and they basically were just like dead links. That is something that we have resolved. We also uh, gave our internal team uh, a lot of quality of life changes for our, our uh, customer support portal. Uh, so they now are better equipped to help you out. And that is pretty much everything that we have done over the last couple, I think before we last met on specifically Marketplace. Uh, and then in terms of like all of our web properties, uh, we're rolling out a whole new Linded Home Store uh, where you can pretty much shop to your heart's content. Is there any questions specifically about anything I just talked about? So you've seen items from users who are no longer in world, uh, are not findable in search. Are you talking about marketplace search? Or are you talking about another form of search? They should, we shouldn't have removed those. Uh, if you have a specific example that you can send to me, um, I can go with the QA team and try reproducing it. Right, so um, we didn't remove, when I say remove, it's we remove them from the marketplace. We didn't delete them. They're, they're in an archive. Syntax, we have actually mentioned that quite a few times over the last, I don't know, four months or so. Not having that it's a voice meeting, that's the outcome. That person being very angry and then leaving. We really do need to put that in the blog posts. Yeah, well, to be fair, voice is the only efficient way to, to have these meetings, most uh, for like large ideas. Speaking of large ideas, uh, an idea has been raised um, in the last SEUG um, by mostly by Sassy and then Axel. Um, Ver and Dave uh, really liked it, so I'd like to repeat it here because it's a web idea. It's um, it's specifically for you guys. Yeah. Um, before we um, jump into okay. that, uh, yeah. So the the that we want, we were, we were wanting to not have it in voice, have it in text. So that way people who are non-native English speakers can take the text and then put it into a translator. Is that what we were referring to? No, we're just saying that when you promote 
the meetings are happening in the blog and you say, come to our meetings, you don't say that you need voice. So that gentleman just came here, was sitting here, not understanding why there were random three word sentences being strewn about because he didn't know that voice was, he didn't have voice active. I see, okay. And and we've mentioned that a few times over the months that you just need to add one line of text to your blog post saying you will need voice. Okay, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. So, but that's been <laughs> that's been said a few times, and it and it still keeps not not um, happening. So if you can let somebody know they they, it, it it's better to think that you need voice and turn up and it be a text meeting than to turn up thinking it's a text meeting and missing out. Yeah. I see. Okay. Or you can just carry a sign with you with every, on every meeting and just drop it in the instance. Uh, out of curiosity, um, would everyone prefer if it was a text-based meeting versus voice, or would they prefer a voice? Um, I would highly prefer voice. I think a lot of the ideas have been easier to communicate with voice than text, um, but I wouldn't want to exclude people. So I think this meeting runs really well with voice. There's other meetings that only do text and they seem to run well too, but it, it just really depends on the meeting. This one seems to work well with voice for everybody that I, that regularly comes, I think. So it's a question of efficiency. <clears throat> I was going to ask with the new PBR stuff, is there going to be some sort of special sign or blowy stuff on the marketplace to differentiate non-PBR from PBR items? That is something that we're planning on doing. Just because your voice is a little low, the, I think the specific of the question was, is are we going to have plans to designate whether something is PBR or non-PBR on the marketplace? That is correct. Yes, we do have plans to do that. I, I have a question about uh, uh, the marketplace but it's sure. not related to the topics. May I ask, or you want to go over something else before? Uh, is, uh, yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, so uh, this was uh, a concern that was uh, uh, raised like almost a year ago, and uh, I haven't heard any follow-up follow on it, uh, but it's about uh, uh, the gifting feature on Marketplace. Uh, is there any any uh, possibility to opt out an item from uh, the ability of gifting it to somebody else? So uh, you want the ability to opt out of receiving a gift from someone else? Uh, no, uh, like I am. I have a, a store and uh, uh -huh. for instance, I, I have an item, let's say I have like a, a couch and uh, I, as a merchant, uh, I want to not have people being able to send this uh, couch to a third person. Okay. Uh, could there be like a way, is there like any way to basically avoid users doing that? We don't have is there a, a reason way. why. Uh, yes, there is a reason. If you want, I can explain, but I, I'm not sure if like they, they push this feature because I wasn't aware of it at least. I'm not aware of any way of preventing someone from gifting your item that's listed on marketplace. Uh, okay. So I, I'm thinking through like ways of blocking people and I'm, I'm that there might be an edge case where if you have someone blocked in world, but I'm not entirely certain, uh, yeah. but yeah, I am curious what, what your reasoning why. Okay. Uh, the reasoning it is because it is like a, a recurring problem that happens a lot. And I will explain the scenario. Uh, let's say I, I own a store and, uh, I have this couch that is for sale. And uh, uh, for instance, uh, a person decides to buy a couch 
but gives this couch to a third person. This person is, let's call him, uh, call him Larry, for instance. Larry received the couch and the couch gets paid by person X. Uh, after a week, person X gets banned because the lindens that he spent on that couch, thousand lindens spent on the couch, were obtained in an illicit way. And Linda Lab re, re took the money from my bank account as me as a merchant and banned the person X. But Larry now owns the couch. And uh, Linda Lab doesn't have any proof that Larry was aware of being having a couch gifted, but yet he received the product and I didn't receive any Lindens. And I heard of many creators that get these problems. And while Linda Lab bans all the accounts with stolen Lindens, uh, people still benefit from like their product for free, essentially. Okay, that does make sense. So uh, I, I know of a lot of stores that get targeted by this very specific type of hackers that have multiple account, go steal Lindens, and then like actually get items to those people. And uh, it, like there is not really anything that can be done, you know, to prove that those people, you know, they could be innocent. There is no way to prove their, you know, their status, but. It would be nice if, as creators, we could like forbid to gift certain items, so that doesn't happen. Okay, so um, I'm gonna basically give a scenario, and you tell me if I'm correct. So, person A uh, creates an account, uh, uses a fraudulent way of acquiring Lindens, buys said item, and gifts it to another account, which may be account that they own. Uh, that account that used the uh, fraudulent Lindens and gifted the item gets banned, but person B who received the gift still gets the couch and you lose out on your money. Correct, yes. And okay, that makes sense. Person B could also be a person that is targeted by an hacker to make, make him being framed as you know an account doing fraudulent things while it could just be like a bully of other hackers that are trying to, you know, Frame him. Uh, curious, if Eddie, I can, if I can how, how often does that is. happen? I'm curious from everyone, like if you could say, like, oh, that happens to me, like once a month, uh, once a week. Uh, to me personally, uh, again, this is a really hard scenario to prove, but uh, uh, there has been, especially with gift cards, like gift card, uh, uh, when there was like duplication glitch, it's a lot of things that happen and they stay in the open and it's really hard to prove them. But when I look at the stats, there is like a lot of things that happen like that and they're very suspicious. Uh, and I would like to have the option at least for the valuable items to just decide which items, you know, like if I have like a 5,000 Linden full set, I'd rather have that one not being able to be gifted. So I can, you know, count my losses because I wouldn't care on a smaller item to start, you know, okay. digging through that. that. So I, as a merchant, I would like to have like the, the ability to choose, you know, how much I want my store to be exposed to this risk. Got it. Okay. Thank you. If I could clarify the scenario a little bit um, sure. in a more Machiavellian way, uh, let's say I go and I get myself a very cheap temporary AWS compute instance. I um, install a viewer on it. I create an account through it. Um, I go ahead and obtain Linden's in a fraudulent way and buy myself an entire store to my avatar by gifting it through Marketplace. I lose nothing the instance is closed, the account gets banned, the dummy account. The seller is out of a lot of money. Are they though? Sorry, I hate to be devil's advocate here. It's not like the items go from your inventory though. I know, I know this is like yeah it's it's one of those really well, hard first ones of all, it is i have theft. all the sympathy and i let's have all not, the empathy uh, right let's, I, no, I, let's I, not muddy it though it's theft it's loss of profit it is um, it is loss it is theft absolutely i absolutely agree but the downside to having i mean 
unfortunately the five thousand dollar sofa is the one that's going to be more likely to be gifted legitimately than not gifted because that's the kind of thing that I know myself personally would want to give to a friend because you know they wouldn't buy it for themselves kind of situation. So to turn around and say I can't gift my friend that $5,000 couch means that I'm going to go somewhere else and spend $5,000. Yes, but to turn around and say that all the marketplace vendors absolutely have to be exposed to that problem when some of them don't want to be exposed at the cost of losing sales. Um, I think it should be a merchant's decision. Uh, yeah, I mean, opting out of gifting in general would be an interesting idea. I mean, if you just, you don't want, like, no copy items to be gifted or, or whatever, like, having the option, I guess. My point is that it's very easily exploitable. It is, it has been happening for a while. I've heard it not just from Axel, but from many other people before. Um, and there is no actual solution because you can't really prove that the person receiving the item is in any way complicit, which is why it's a tempting proposition for a lot of people who can easily exploit the system. Right. I, I would have to I would have to say that the Lindens themselves are the only ones that could actually look into that because only a Linden is gonna know how many cases they have per day, month, year, whatever, where they actually do pull back the funds off an account and ban the account. And it just doesn't seem to me like that, yeah, is is it a daily thing? Is it an hourly thing? I mean, just to say How much it from theft my... is 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 important like at, at which point right is it a little, a little theft can we leave it alone is it okay does it have to be a lot of theft for it to be a problem and again this comes down to real life versus sl in real life businesses have to take theft into account to run a business but they actually lose the item no it, it shouldn't life, just be the, the cost item. of run of uh of a business i'm sorry but theft um this is not the real world. We can regulate things here a little bit better. Um, if a vendor wants to opt out of gifting, they should have that option. I don't see why less options for and people I said I is agree better. With that part. I agree with that part. Well, that's I think the only thing that's important. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have numbers on hand. Um, I definitely can go talk to the team who does know that. Um, the, the, the reason I ask is it's just lots of times people who are like actually on the ground doing it have a pretty good sense of like how often it happens to them and that's normally like a good enough justification for me to take that to the team and be like hey this is something maybe we want to change i mean but I can, i'll definitely go look into that board, yeah if you put it across the board that gifting wasn't wasn't possible say say it was just that gifting's not possible through marketplace you can only do it in world or something like that um, or you could have a blacklist or a whitelist, some some way of, of creating a scenario where, say, as a, a a gold member of a store, you can gift regardless because you've bought for the last 15 years off that one particular store, etc. I I think that, like, usually, like, the scenarios are, like, something that more happen, like, in a quick sequence of time altogether, and then they stop for a month and month, and then they reappear. Is more like a tool to prevent it when it sure. happens. Like uh, when there is a new exploit that they found, find for stealing account, they empty the money and then they start buying. So a whitelist wouldn't really protect you because any account can be stolen, any account can be used for this. Sure. But uh, creators, if they have a simple switch of a button of a tool in those times to mitigate the damage that this axe can do, uh, it would be beneficial both for Lindens and you know, uh, and for us I can, as creators. I can I can think of a positive reason, sort of, that you might want to think about um, putting it in anyway and then and then those people that want it for that reason can use it that way. Um, a lot of people are now using Marketplace to create daily sales as in like a, a huge reduction for 24 hours or for a weekend or whatever like that. Um, blocking gifting in that might mean that it's sort of like you don't get to have it for 50L if you're too lazy to actually log in um, on your own account. So we're not going to let you just gift it for, to 15 of your olds in one 
one bash. So that would be a, a positive spin on why it's being added to the to the options, if anything. Sort of like, you know, how like when people have a sale in their store and they say you can't use gift cards or you can't use store credit, etc. One thing I will say is if you have an item that is limited, um, like you have a unique item that you're just selling one of, if someone gifts that to someone else in a fraudulent way, um, we can't return that item back to you. So I can't, I can't see a definite use case with that. Yeah, I, I, th I think it will just save a lot of headaches to the support team of Second Life because when those things happen, it gets busy. And, uh, you know, we could do our part by switching, a f you know, flipping a switch and, you know, reduce, like, mitigate the damage when, when those scenarios happen. Yeah, I think that's a fair, fair ask. Um, w I, as far as I know, I'm just clarifying for someone who asked in chat, I am not aware of any way of returning an item to someone. Uh, so if, if let's say you have a limited item on the store and you're, it's a unique item that you're selling one of, if that gets, like, gifted to someone else, I, I'm not aware of any way of returning that item to you. Yeah, on something like that, I can see how um, that would be a real concern because sometimes they are really high value, um, no copy items on marketplace. Yeah. Um, so that would really screw you because, you know, it's gone, you can't ever resell it again. But for, you know, all these digital items that you can sell unlimited copies of, I guess I would really just balance the no gifting, you know, losing all those sales um, compared to the percentage of fraudulent sales. And Axel, have you tried um, gifting something to um, an army that you banned, like maybe using an alt or something? Have you tested that? Because I thought that you cannot do that. Um, I think I ran across that situation last year. Oh, well, uh... But the problem is that, like, what if I ban this person, but, like, you know, I, I was aware of the situation after the damage was already done. Like, well, yeah, I mean, you I, can't you can't prepare for absolutely everything. It's like, you know, um, I mean, of course, having the option available to merchants, I don't think there's an issue with that. Um, I'm just kind of, I guess, a, as an opinion, would like to throw out there to be careful implementing that because I think... I mean, I really think you'd lose more in sales that you'd gain on not losing items, um, you know, due to fraud. Unless you really do have a very, very high percentage of these situations happening. I mean, in the case where, like, a person like me uh, wants not to do that, and a person like you was a store and a different type of audience wants to do it, we both want to have the opportunity to do that. But I feel like not having that bad on kind of prevents people that might be under an attack of that type. There is so many type of these bullies around, unfortunately. Uh, I think it's a tool that will help them protect themselves and protect Lyndon from having to go through a, an in-depth investigation. But, you know. Great. Can I ask one more question? Sorry. Uh, Axel, do you have a vendor system? Uh, in yeah, your we store? Use Casper Vend. Yeah. Right. So you can ban accounts through Casper Vend, but did you ever consider just not listing those items on marketplace and just having maybe representations of those items on mar marketplace so you don't we, lose the we have the a significant uh, we have a significant amount of sales in marketplace and i can tell that right. like yeah. the amount of gifted item is merely 10 percent of it so basically that will mean roughly losing 35 right. percent of my market and uh, you instead check of losing... those against gifted like what's what's your level of so everybody that's buying okay sorry let me mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry i got my my mouth and my brain didn't work in tandem um so when you look at your sales though is 99 percent of those sales you're having on marketplace person buying is person receiving what's the what's the ratio of gifting there like are you still going to lose a considerable amount by turning gifting off i'm not trying I, I, to give you a hard I time have, i absolutely no, no, agree no, no, with I, the absolutely option. no no yeah. I, I agree uh, like uh, I, i'm not able to pull off a specific number of like gifted versus direct purchases 
but okay. usually it is like I, I can give a napkin number right now. I, I can actually do some research and look into it because there is no way to filter them in Casper. But I will say that the ratio roughly it is probably fifteen percent gifted versus like seventy five. Uh, sorry, eighty five percent. That's that's a rough number that I will say by looking just at the scroll. But I could give a more precise estimate by actually calculating it. Uh, right. But I, I can tell that like the marketplace uh, represent like around thirty five percent of my revenue. So opting those items entirely out of uh, uh, out of marketplace will mean a significant cut of my profit, while uh, just cutting the gift gifting will only cut uh, the fifteen percent of the thirty five percent. So it's it's a very small cut, and uh, it would avoid having those items in the hands that uh, of yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, pay it's going to depend. It depends on what you sell. Like for for I have one customer. One customer. She's bought one item of mine like seventy times. She's gifted it 70 times. No joke. <laughs> so it's like wow. you just, you know, so that's the, that's the thing. There are some people out there that are just, they believe in a, a, a particular item. And like sometimes I got a marketplace and it will say, you've bought this January 5th. You've bought this April 17th. You've bought this, like the same item because I gift it. So it's just, you know, I, I was just curious what the, the ratio I have is. been to a lot of like new product releases um, at a couple of merchants who just don't even have gifting built into their merchants at all, even in world. And um, people will, you know, consistently multiple times per release make comments that, oh, I can't gift it. I guess they just lost the sale and so on. So, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there for people to kind of yeah, feel you know, how uh, cu customers feel about these types of things and how often that can like, lead to lost sales and stuff. And I, and I completely understand the the personal belief system is stronger as well than the profit. Like you can actually get a lot more out of saying, okay, I'm not going to let you take advantage of me versus caring about losing the other sales. So I can understand that if that's your, if, if that's your decision, then that's the decision you're not going to make lightly. But I can understand the feeling of, of saying, I'm just not going to let you abuse my store. So yeah, I think I think that there's many reasons to opt it in. Like I said, you know, people that don't want people to take advantage of the huge reductions without actually doing any of the of the legwork, so and so on. So, but there is a banning thing in Casper Vend. I just assumed that worked across marketplace as well, but I guess not. Yeah, if you have it integrated with Casper Vend, the definition, and again, I'm pretty sure. You can't ban for future fraud. You can't pre prepare for everything. You can't. You can't just you know restrict everything. And already report that tells you exactly who's going to commit fraud. You can't restrict everything in the world for you know the handful of people who will abuse right. it. That's you know that just screws over the majority of humanity. Um, because it's like all the people that hurts. still have um you can't be on their region if you're if you're less than so many days old because they believe that you're just there for some bad reason they forget that people make alts and go straight to the stores and spend thousands of dollars but they can't get in because then they're, they're a day old so uh something to remember is that when we're talking about a problem right a problem where someone is fraudulently buying items from your store and then sending it to another account and then getting banned. The solution may not necessarily be a flag on gifting. That could be one solution. Um, but I'd be curious to go talk to our team and see, like, is there any repeating patterns with people who do that, right? Like, you know, Sassy brought up, like, oh, like, you know, there are areas that prevent new users from coming in, right? Because uh, lots of times people will make throwaway accounts to come and troll. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that the solution would be that we don't let people who are only like two days old not shop on Marketplace, but we probably can come up with a solution that may not be necessarily turning on and off gifting. Yeah, I mean, one solution, one solution. is to check their MAC address and just ban them. So, for example, if they send a gift to their other account and the person who sent that gift turned out to be fraudulent, you can check the MAC address of the person who sent the gift and match it to the other person to see if it's an alt, you know? I mean, yeah, this is this is like this is would be all the kind of stuff that the sec team could handle. I mean, there should be proper logging and scenes and 
you know, I mean, it could all be done where you can really detect unusual activity, you know, unusual volume, um, you know, all those uh, fun little things. And I think part of that, of course, is already in place, but um, maybe that could be, you know, fleshed out quite a bit. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so I do want to move on because um, I do have other questions. Um, we've got 19 minutes left, but this is something that I will talk with the team about. Um, and we, we can see if we can come up with some solutions for it. I'm sorry, I wanted to go back again because uh, I've asked it um, three times in chat and there was no um, traction on it. Um, there was a discussion about moving all the items to uh, an archive section in the marketplace versus completely deleting them. Um, and that's come up a few times and there's a lot of, you know, um, talk about it, how their pros to that. Um, and I wanted to know what happened to that discussion because you were talking about, you know, the deleted items earlier. So, uh, so uh, we're not deleting any items. Um, we removed them from the, from displaying on the marketplace. That doesn't mean that they were deleted and can never come back. Uh, they were archived specifically. Yeah. Now I haven't, um, I haven't heard anything confirming that we would bring them back if that's the next question, but what I do know is, is that they're not deleted forever. They've been archived. They were just taken down from being displayed on the marketplace. Oh, okay, cool, awesome. Yeah, I mean, that would be amazing then if um, that could end up in an archive section. And, you know, then people would be very obviously aware uh, because they would have to click on, you know, that part of the store to access those items. And, um, I mean, you know, it's not huge amounts, but every, um, Every once in a while, you know, a few uh, dozen times a month, it comes up that people are looking for things that have disappeared from the marketplace. And that's, you know, in just things that I personally observe. And there's, of course, a whole lot more happening. <laughs> where I'm not watching. I posted something. Um, basically, there's a bunch of PBR ready stuff on Sketchfab and the Epic Marketplace. Um, they do it a little bit different. Like they have to validate every single item that you put on the marketplace just to make sure that you're a trusted vendor. Here, I know that you guys definitely don't have the manpower and it would be pr practically impossible to validate every single market marketplace uh, listing. But just so you know, uh, there's probably going to be a spike in Sketchfab ready items <laughs> that are just going to be ripped. I mean, not downloaded or whatever and then upload it in here maybe even try people would even try to sell them even if they're cc0 and for free on sketch or marketplace or uh, epic marketplace just just a thought okay is there anything else i missed in chat yeah there, there is um there was an idea raised on uh on this last cug um i was going to mention it um, it was Sassy's idea, and then Axel provided some input. I kind of prepared a, not, uh, a note to present it a little bit, if we have still have time. Um, sure, yeah. So, first of all, um, the idea hinges on the, um, on the way to, for every, uh, for every resident to have an image database um where they can uh, put images those images can go into a uh, marketplace or they can go into a uh, linden lab analog of Flickr, which is sorely needed for multiple reasons first of all Flickr doesn't like second life doesn't want second life um, um secondly it's um it's a way for second life for linden labs to uh make a little bit more money through um let's say a second life Flickr analog um uh, uh, commercial accounts and um, those all of those images can be linked on that one central database um, and uh, they can also contain metadata which is where it gets interesting if you have an image of um, an avatar wearing some clothes um, the um, the creators of those clothes can mark um, like mouse over so when a user mouses over the, the, the item, they get a link to the marketplace or just a buy button that allows to immediately, basically off that image to make a purchase. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing, it would allow for bloggers 
who um who blog for uh for those um for those creators to receive a small commission for every sale made through their picture. Um it will also allow for London Labs to skim uh, from multiple spaces and also for London Labs to uh, put up, um, let's say, ads that uh, other residents and businesses could uh, could pay for on that Flickr site. I got a question. The first thing you noted, um, I think you said that Flickr doesn't like Second Life and doesn't want Second Life. Yes. Uh, I'm curious, like, why do you feel that way? I obviously don't um, work at Flickr, so I, I don't know what they're doing specifically or how they feel, but I'm curious how you feel. Um, Sasha, would you like to take one to take it? Hi. I mean, Hi. Uh, it's not just, exactly I want to get throw in real quick. Like with... Hold on. Just hold on, because I know what you, you wrote. Hold yeah. on. Flickr, Flickr doesn't dislike yeah. us. What it is is that Second Life abuses Flickr because it's used to going into a platform and taking over and believing everything belongs to them. There are guidelines in Flickr that state that if you were to promote a commercial product, you have to be a premium account holder. So that means that half of the people that that have stores and ex, um, et cetera, that were posting on Flickr for free for years. The rule was always there. They're acting like it's new. It's not new. It's always been there because I've been a Flickr pro person since 2007. So it's always been there, but they got away with it for so long. Now they're not getting away with it. Their accounts are being closed and they're, and they're chucking tantrums and everything's going on because they don't want to pay Flickr. But, but... It's not that they don't want you pay, it's that they don't want to pay another resource. So that money would be spent in Second Life if Second Life provided a Flickr alternative. As in, you could have a, 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 a just no account, like you could just be a, a non-premium resident and you could say be able to upload say a thousand pictures or whatever, that's how it used to be with Flickr. You could have a thousand for free and they would just wrote drop the last ones off for new ones, et cetera, et cetera. And you can just run happily and whatever. But we could do it where you could add a couple of dollars to premium or add a couple of dollars to premium plus and those people could do more things. You could you could have a commercial aspect of it and you could pay a little bit more. But you could pay in Lindens. So you could actually be using the money that you generate as a business to pay for this platform, which you can't do with Flickr because Flickr would have to be another person paying another credit card account to something that may not be easy for them to do. And the idea was that if you upload all those images onto your Slicker, <laughs> I used the term Slicker as an alternative, but I regret doing that now. But anyway, Slicker. Um, if you uploaded all your commercial vendor images to Slicker, then you could use those UUIDs or, or whatever to load them into Marketplace so that you're not having to upload more photos. So it would be better, more beneficial for LL um, overall as well. And you wouldn't be waiting on anything because it would just, they would just cross over. Then there was talk about the fact that you could click that picture and go directly to the marketplace store to buy it and so on and so on. So, and then there was the idea that if I was to feature something in a photograph as a blogger, it could be linked to that item. And then if somebody bought the item because of my picture, then I would get say a cut. So it'd be kind of like putting an affiliate system into the photo system. Second Life is photography insane. The fact that SL has never monetized that before is, is kind of nuts. Um, you would have stores that would want to do advertising just like you have in Marketplace, but it doesn't seem to get the same traction. But imagine if if a blogger or, or a person, a photographer you followed has 5,000 hits on one picture and you get to put your store ad there on the bottom right or something like that. That's amazing. The money the money that you would pull in would be huge. Every single person that pays for pro is $50 US dollars a year that SL doesn't have. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, anyway, we brought it up and Dave was really excited about it. So he was trying he was talking to somebody at the same time and 
we kind of assumed that was you and your team, but if not, I think that you and Dave need to have a chat. Dave P. London. Yeah. Uh, Sassy, can can I say a few words about this, or you Go want ahead. to make? Uh, first of all, if if you don't mind, guys, uh, I have a, like a link of like a visualizer to see how this work. Uh, I don't know if it, you're okay with me posting a GZO link. Uh, can I go ahead with that or? Uh, sure. It is just like a brief screenshot that I took from IKEA, which has a very similar system to this. Where like when you over over an item, it appears, and that could be like a link to a product page in the marketplace. And basically, this this idea came uh, in the group because of three main factor. A at the moment, uh, Second Life doesn't have a social media platform uh, that is the main one where like uh, bloggers and create bloggers can post their pictures of their avatars, and creators can uh, get publicity of their own items. And all the alternatives that there is around are paid, where like we have to pay a fee to Flickr. I think it's around six bucks a month to be paying for this. And uh, B, uh, it's because uh, uh, like we wanted to create a way for bloggers to be paid because after Gacha is gone and Breedable is not as the mainstream anymore, Second Life is lacking for the normal users that are not create content creators to. Uh, make re revenue in Second Life, and this will give an opportunity for talented people that love to take pictures to uh, create a Second Life income for themselves by benefiting uh, creators and benefiting Linden Lab by increasing the sales. So uh, we, we, we like, we're talking about this idea, but of course it wasn't like the proper meeting, so we, we wanted like to uh, talk about it in this one. Mm, okay. That does seem to make sense. Uh, did anybody else want to throw any ideas around this? Uh, just, just a slight uh, caution. Sorry, go. Just a slight caution. I think uh, when it comes to blogger commission, it should only be um, um, a vendor should be able to make a list of bloggers that they would accept to give commission to to prevent abuse. Um, what kind of abuse are you anticipating there? Because um, I mean, one of the things that uh, especially Sassley pointed out too is that it would kind of be great if. Uh, anyone who very regularly, let's say, posts, um, you know, amazing um, pictures of using various products and then also links to them uh, so the merchants get their credit, that they should also be able to um, get a commission, even if they're not necessarily, um, you know, an official blogger. And I mean, if that's really kind of a concern of that being somehow abused, and I'm not sure, like, in which way so that it could be discussed, then maybe there could be, like, a lesser commission than, let's say, for a... Um, official blogger, like just you know, a smidgen kind of something. Uh, I, yeah. I just thought of a reason it could be abused is people stealing other people's pictures. Um, so if you took somebody else's picture, put it on your uh, stream, and then and then got all your friends to buy from that, so that you generate the income, that could be a way it could commit fraud. But yes, I did point out that, for instance, there's photographers out there who do credit or even stores that credit other items that are in their ads that, you know, do amazing work and get amazing views. So you wouldn't necessarily want... So again, it would be an opt-in or out thing. You could limit it or you couldn't or, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I wonder how often that would actually happen that, you know, something like would do that versus... I don't know. Well, it would also... I mean, yeah, there's, there's always like balls concern. who would take advantage of something. I know. My concern, I'm... I'm even, even though I've blogged for over a decade and all of that sort of stuff, I'm not 100% on board with the whole blogging, bloggers getting money from the blogging thing. I think it would definitely, definitely skew how blogging was done. Um, you know, f favorite stores, items that generate more money... Do you, do you get what I mean? Like it would it would change how uh, stores would be actually seen because bloggers would just be focusing on the ones that, that are going to make them cash versus 
actually sharing information with residents about fantastic creations. So, but that's my personal, personal um, thoughts on that. So I'm sort of like sitting there on the on the thing on that one. Right. I I I I think that's what I was sort of getting at too. It's sort of like you can either not provide it, or you can provide it, or you might want to only do it for your bloggers that you have in your own store team versus bloggers that do events and etc. Like that. But the blogging, the bloggers getting commissions or anybody getting an affiliate commission is besides the point. I think that the first part of it should just be that we have a photography platform. That Second Life says, okay, we realise that that all the photos of Second Life going out there to every other platform and just overriding what those platforms are needs to be brought back home and and give us the options to have groups for stores, groups for for role play communities, things like that. It would it would really bring everything back in. People don't want to sign into Flickr at all because they don't want to make yahoo accounts so when you're trying to promote something and you link to the Flickr accounts customers say i can't see it you know we need to to make it that sassy scarborough's account on her a photography platform is sassy scarborough's it's absolutely going to um. be jenna huntsman's it's actually going to be dark overtones there can't be any name changes or anything it's going to be your second life account so yeah, i want to jump, jump in real quick um go ahead we only have three minutes left um but i wanted to mention that I, I you know there's been feedback like hey can we have this meeting more often um you know we really this is like one of our favorite meetings which you know makes me feel great um i haven't uh gotten to having this meeting more often but i personally will be at other meetings uh so the content creator meeting that happens two times a month uh, i got uh the person who runs that meeting to allow me to come and I know lots of times, like in other meetings, things that would come up that are marketplace or web related uh, might get brought up. And then, you know, the Linda might be like, hey, you know, this isn't the right forum for that. You need to go to the web meeting. Uh, the content creator meeting does have a like overlap a lot with like marketplace and web properties. Um, so I will be at those meetings as well. So we can talk there. So if you're interested in that kinds of things, uh, I believe it's Thursdays uh, and I I'll be there as well. That's great. Uh, okay. So. Go ahead. I was just going to say, so you'll be at the meeting tomorrow? That is the one meeting one I will not was, be at. Yeah. Oh, okay. Starting after okay, that So one. from next week onwards sort of thing. Yes. Or whatever, yes. whenever it is. Okay, great. Because there is definitely a crossover between what we say here and what happens there. And, and yeah. sometimes yeah. they're very, yeah. Be so, prepared though. Dave likes to stay around for an additional three hours. <laughs> So I, I the heard, question yeah. would probably be best for tomorrow then with the AI generated texture packs for marketplace. Uh, yeah, um, and then I I do look at the recordings of the other meetings, um, okay. so I, I do see that information. But yes, yeah, so other than the meeting tomorrow, which will still happen, um, and you you feel free to bring it up to uh, the Lindens at that meeting, and they'll they'll come and talk to me as well. Uh, but after that that meeting specific tomorrow, I will be at the other content creator meetings going forward. Okay, there's two ways for potential abuse. I'll be really quick. One is, as Sassy said, uh, people can steal pictures and uh, basically steal commission and sales, which is bad. Uh, second, as Sassy said again, I think, um, is that to prevent all the bloggers uh, from focusing on uh, specific stores, you can basically artificially limit how many authorized bloggers a store can have and you can scheme of that by basically saying that okay so commercial account uh can have like let's say 20 bloggers a premium commercial account can have 40 bloggers and so on that would force yeah, that other bloggers to focus on other stores Thank you for the context. We could leave to the merchant to establish the percentage that they're willing to pay to those bloggers. I think all of that stuff needs to be, it needs to be considered to, that it will be implemented. But I think the first part is getting us a photography platform. I think that that's uh, yeah, the just most to clarify important though. part. Just to no, clarify, no, Axel. Yeah, yeah. That, that, Axel, that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, you get a number of bloggers you can add to your list, 
Um, but the number of bloggers depends, let's say, on your account type. Uh, but there is a specific, up to a specific number of bloggers, so the, as to prevent all of the bloggers ever on focusing to, on just popular stores. Yeah, I, I want to say something. I want to say that uh, uh, as the backbone, we do pay our bloggers. Like at this moment, at this stage, all our bloggers get paid in Linden for uh, reviewing our items. And uh, we established this policy a couple of months ago. And this has been like the time where we had the best content around. And uh, like, I'm very, very happy to share my feedback whenever this discussion comes again. If you want any insight on the difference between free bloggers and, you know, so, get a monetary value out of I have a question, if at all possible, I can squeeze it in here. We're, we're actually after time and I have to run to another meeting. Uh, but Phil, you can, you can, you can DM me uh, and I will read it and I will get back to you. Awesome. I, I have another meeting also waiting for me. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. And if you're going to, um, you know, if you want to talk more, I'll be at the uh, creator meetings going forward, except for the one tomorrow. Uh, and if you, you know, if you've got time, you can always message me in world and I do read them and I will get back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Yep. I was just curious, does anybody know what's the copyright stuff around AI stuff? Like AI generated textures? Yay, nay. Uh, it's a any... gray area at the moment. Oh, okay. That's good. So, I mean, right. listen, Steam already banned everything AI generated by def just, just banned outright, which I expect all the platforms to eventually do that. Uh, ArtStation obviously also banned everything made by AI, by AI uh, for obvious reasons. Yes. Um, I highly hope Second Life, Linden Labs will also ban AI generated stuff. Um, I can't say why. I can tell you that there is very high potential of abuse. I can tell I cannot tell you why, but it's bad. It's extremely bad. And unless Lindens do something preemptively, we're yeah. working on a problem. I mean I, I I see why they would make a Blender plugin for AI generated textures, you know, and a lot of people do use Blender. I, I I'm, Okay Axel. I, my opinion is it you should be just later. allowed. Because it is what it is. It's out there. Then, actually, they will just have to go by whatever the Supreme Court or if there's any cases in the United States that um, they would have yeah, to so the, the abusable part is not necessarily in texture. There, there's a lot more to it. Um, I, hmm, um, I, I develop viewers. I have been uh, developing viewer features from time to time. Uh, I can tell you that th there's a looming problem and it is coming. Uh, and uh, when it comes, we, we are all in it for a bad, for a very bad time. So I'll probably have to quietly talk to Lindenson and tell them that uh, <laughs> they should watch out. Yeah, I think they won't stop it. I mean, if they're not going to stop Sketchfab items from being sold on the market, I doubt they're going to stop any AI-generated texture packs. I don't know. I don't know what they'll do, but they should be aware of a problem that is, that has been not just reported, but suggested to me. It's going to be a little bit more difficult because in the future, I mean, we're just maybe two years out of mesh, full mesh generation via AI. So uh, full mesh generation by AI is already a thing. No, I know, but usable mesh generation by AI. No, I mean usable. Yeah, I mean, I mean usable mesh generation by AI is already a thing, um, especially if you just uh, combine with procedural generation and just add a, a sprinkle of AI to finish things off. Um, it, it, it goes very well already. Um, AI is a wonderful tool. It's also a destructive tool when misused and uh, things are going to get misused as, as they do with every new tech. I don't know. Let's it's just a, say, okay. It's a tricky, it's a tricky thing because even Photoshop has AI. So then if you use AI to do counter aware feel, films in Photoshop, and then you bake, you know, you bake your, your, Obviously, you yeah. your textures and stuff, 
would that even be considered generated by AI? Oh, no. okay. So you see, where where do you draw the line? <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you where. Okay, so renderings have been done uh, through AI for many many years now because that's what's called the noising algorithms, where you render um, a somewhat noisy image and then you denoise through AI. That's how this whole AI fab started in the first place because it can kind of generate 25% of the, like the rest of the image. Um, the thing is, um, I worry more not about textures or say skins, um, which is concept a thing, yeah. Art. Is concept art the thing that worries you? No, I worry about mesh. I uh, would rather not talk any, like I would rather not um, define the problem itself, but I worry about uh, m much more tangible things in Second Life than uh, the concept art you can get from uh, <laughs> just yeah, doing something. You hide displacement, then you bake the mesh, you bake the normals. It's it's super easy. Yeah, you can do that yeah. in stable um, right now. Yeah, like, again, concept uh, concept art using AI for concept art should be legit, completely legit for. Uh, uh, for uh, if you like creating your own mesh, that should be completely fine. I don't see a problem with that uh, because you, you can't really copyright designs. And not to mention that uh, most of the items you see in Second Life were created through, you know, somebody goes an image and recreates it in 3D and uploads it to Second Life. Yeah, kit bashing from other yeah. items that were bought from sets of kit bashing, whatever. Again, that's the other aspect is like, Okay, so what if you use only parts? Because the copyright law is very weird. Like if you change about 70% of the item, meaning if only 30% of the item uses an AI-generated texture, then you're in the clear. 